Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we are going to talk about Angular View Encapsulation. As we have seen so far, we can style an Angular application the same way that we can style any other Angular application. We have been styling here the course card component using a few styles that we have available here in our styles.css file available here under the assets folder. So here is a plain CSS file that allows us to apply commonly used styles such as for example this one that is going to style here our title or this one here that is going to style our course description. We also have here styles for the image, for the button, etc. Now notice one thing, clearly all these styles here at the beginning of the file up until at least this part of the template but even below all these styles relate to the course card component itself. So it would be great if we would have a way to associate these styles more closely to the component because right now this is on a separate general file without any specific link to the course card component. Switching here to the component we see that besides the HTML template we also have here a style URLs property and we can pass it an array containing the names of the CSS files associated with this particular component. In this case we only have one file, it's the course card component.css file that has here only a small amount of styles. So it looks like Angular forces a way of associating styles to a component. What we could do in order to reduce the size of our styles.css file is to take these styles and move them here. But the question is, is there any difference between adding the styles here in the course card component CSS file or globally in a global style sheet. Let's see exactly what the difference is. We are going to switch to our application component and we are going to add here a new test card div. Let's now apply to this div one of the CSS classes available in styles.css. So we're going to take this class here, course card, that is going to apply to our div a nice shadow around it. So here is the test card div and here is the shadow. Now take a look at what happens if I take this style which is just a standard CSS style that is applied globally to everything on the page. Now we remove this style from the styles.css style sheet and we're going to paste it into the course card component CSS file. If we now refresh the application, we are going to see that now the style is still getting correctly applied here to the component, but the difference is now this external div is no longer getting affected here by this style. This means that Angular is making this style specific to the component. This style is only visible and can only be shown on the page inside a course card component. This style will not affect the rest of the page. This feature is called view encapsulation. The styles are being encapsulated and are only visible inside the particular course card view. As you can imagine, this style isolation mechanism is going to be very useful in large applications where we have a lot of styles and we want to prevent the multiple styles from interfering with each other. Now, you might be thinking at this point, how does this mechanism exactly work? Let's have a look at how this works in practice. We're going to switch here to a larger window and inspect here our external div. So as you can see, no styles are getting applied here. But if we select here our Angular Core Deep Dive course and we select here the course card element and we choose the div that has here the course card CSS class, we are going to see that here on the style panel we have the box shadow style correctly applied. Now take a look here at the selector of the style. We can see that the style has been modified. Instead we have here this extra attribute specified ng-content-c1. This is the part that is making this style here specific to only this specific component. Let's have a look at how this works. If we read here the style selector, we're going to see that this style can only be applied to an element that contains an attribute that looks like this one. So if you notice here in our course card template, all the elements that belong to the course card template have been added here this ng-content-c1 special attribute. We have here the attribute applied to the course card itself, to the title 
and to other elements here on the template, for example, to the course category. The way that this works is that Angular, when it's instantiating here our view, it's adding to every element of the course card component this special attribute, which is unique to this component. And it's the presence of this attribute that is going to allow Angular to create styles similar to this one. Each component will have a unique attribute style identifier. So if we switch over here, for example, to our application root component, we're going to see that, for example, here, the top menu has a very similar identifier applied to its HTML elements, but this time around it ends in dash C0 and not C1. So each component is going to get here a sequential number that is going to be used to produce this special attribute that is then going to be applied to every element of the template. It's the special content attributes that are going to enable this default view encapsulation mechanism that we are seeing here in action. Now notice that some of the elements here of our template, such as for example the course image itself, are not receiving this special dash C1 attribute. Instead, what we see here if we open this course image template is a different identifier, ng-content-c2. This means that just like the case here of our course card, and just like the case here of our application component, the course image component received a unique attribute identifier that is then going to be stamped in all its template elements. From this, we can conclude that this style here applied to our course card is only visible in the component itself. And this means that the style is not visible to its child components. It's also not visible to its parent components. The only part of the page that can see this style here is any element here of the course card component. So any HTML element that we see here on this template, such as for example, this div, the course title, or for example, here, the course category div, those are the elements that can be styled using styles available here inside course card component.css. As we could see, the elements projected with ng content are going to get stamped with the unique unique attribute of the component where they were created. In this case, with the dash C0 unique attribute of the application component. So let's summarize what we have just learned about this default view encapsulation mechanism. Angular is going to take every component and it's going to create a unique attribute for it. This is the attribute ng content dash C0, C1, C2, etc. Then, whenever Angular is instantiating the template, it's going to take all the HTML elements of the template and it's going to stamp them with this special unique component attribute. It's the presence of this attribute in the component elements that is going to allow Angular to take the component style sheet and modify the styles in order to make them specific to the elements of the component only. Let's now continue to dive deeper into the topic of Angular view encapsulation. We are going to learn how to break the encapsulation if we need to. And we are going to talk about the multiple types of view encapsulation that are available.